Affordable housing is critical for the viability of our community and our mission is to continue to build and renovate whenever possible to bring more units of affordable housing so that we can have teachers and staff come and live and work and be part of this community and volunteer and grow their families here. If there's nowhere for people to live, this is going to be an empty community and it's only going to be the wealthiest of people who can live here. That's not a future I particularly want. During the process of developing the town's affordable housing plans, often there was either the local conservation or land trust at the table. We need both affordable housing and conserved land. So land trusts work with a variety of partners already and all the time, and affordable housing groups are one partner that land trusts work with. At NCLC, we've referred projects to local affordable housing groups when they're not suitable for conservation. There was this one aha moment when we were working with a town, looking at follow the forest and wildlife corridors, and there was a parcel that we identified and we said, you know, this looks important for wildlife connectivity. And someone said, but there's also a ton of road frontage, you know, like I know that our town has been looking at that parcel as significant for the possible development of affordable housing someday. And it was like, well, why couldn't it do both? There's a clear difference in the land that is really suitable for housing development and is really primed for housing development, and land that we already know is very high priority for conservation. And it's obvious when there's a project that's gonna be great for housing and there's a space that's great for conservation, and sometimes there's a little bit of both. Thoughtful, well-sited, well-designed, housing that's within reach of families, young professionals, and young people should have access to nature in it. Sometimes the best thing is a small subdivision, and sometimes the best thing is a large undeveloped hillside. If we're strategic, and if we're talking to each other, there doesn't need to be a conflict at all. Having common strategies and working together collaboratively, we certainly can build sustainable housing on a piece of land and conserve the majority of it. So Gagarin Place is situated off of Route 202 and eight single family homes have given eight families the opportunity for home ownership. These homes were sustainably built and over 10 acres is dedicated to conservation. Norfolk at Haystack Woods, almost a 40 acre site and half of it will remain conserved land and the rest will have 10 affordable home ownership net zero homes. Dresser Woods is another site where half of the site will be conserved and the other half will have 20 units of affordable rental housing. So there's a lot of success stories and examples we can point to where housing and conservation can work together. And so if we talk to each other as opportunities come up, we really think that we can be more successful with both conservation efforts and housing efforts. The green print kind of predates my time at HVA. It's been around for a long time, since I would say about 2007 or 2008. That's really one of the salient things about this project because the relationships that our land trusts have developed over time really kind of prime the pump or set us up for the kind of collaborative work that we're embarking upon now. So the really great thing about this housing and conservation collaboration initiative that we've been involved in is that you have so many people with such deep specific knowledge of the region and also in the fields that they work in. So you have people who are experts in um, land conservation and have been doing that work for a long time and people who have been developing affordable housing and sometimes you have people that do both. It really will make it easier moving forward when you have these groups talking to each other and identifying spaces for conservation, spaces for housing and spaces where you can have both. Here in Connecticut, every single town has a POCD, otherwise known as a Plan of Conservation and Development. The POCD typically sets forth conservation goals. It also sets forth goals for affordable housing, and it may incorporate your town's affordable housing plan. This project that we worked on together is really about taking something that I know we've all held in our hearts for a long time, but making it more public, providing an opportunity for us to talk about it together. I would also suggest becoming involved with your local conservation and your local affordable housing organizations. What we see a lot in the affordable housing world is that people quietly understand the need for housing opportunity, but what we need as 
at town meetings and planning and zoning commissions is vocal support. And I feel like this collaboration helps people who might consider themselves conservation advocates that this is normal that you can be a conservation advocate and also an affordable housing advocate.